Hey guys, Brandon here. So in today's video, I wanna go over photography tips and how you can get better photos of your animals using just your cell phone. Because let's face it, everybody has one of these on them at pretty much all times, and it's a little bit less expensive than going out and getting a DSLR and a flash and all kinds of other things that you need to get photos that way. So one of the most important things when you're thinking about doing photography, you need to understand the lighting. So you can do indoor lighting or outdoor lighting. And I like having a little bit more control over the situation, so today we're going to be talking about doing indoor lighting specifically. So the fact that we're going to be doing indoor lighting, we need to understand what kind of light to use. So for me, I picked up some continuous lights that are 5500 Kelvin, which is daylight temperature, off of Amazon, and those were pretty cheap. I got them specifically to do videos for uh, Instagram and videos for YouTube. I will likely upgrade in the future, but they were a pretty cheap option. And the reason why I mentioned that they are 5500 Kelvin is because you want to have light sources that are the same color temperature. If you have some 5500 Kelvin bulbs, but then you have some incandescent light bulbs, which actually I have in my room, but you can't tell because the lights are off, those two color profiles of light would clash, and then that would cause a problem when you're taking your photos. So some things you're going to have to consider whenever you're setting up your background is you're going to have to determine what kind of basically photo setup you want to have and for that you can get these little plastic sheets off of Amazon pretty cheap I got a white one that's a reflective acrylic and then also a black one that's a reflective acrylic so another important thing to consider whenever you're photographing your animals inside is you want the light source close to the animal because it's going to create a nice soft even light over the animal you're not going to get hard shadows and generally speaking you're not going to have highlights blown out either all right so now that you have your background set up you're going to have to choose your lovely model for today we're going to use this little guy because let's face it a ball python is easier to photograph than a boa is now you can have different options of what you can use to take the photos for the first option, we're going to start with the native iPhone app. All right, so once you have the animal set up the way you want, there's a neat little feature where you can tap on the screen to change the focus, and then you can also bring it up. That way you can ensure the animal's properly exposed, and then you can take the photo. Another option is, is you can hold that, and it'll auto-focus exposure lock, and then you can do the same thing by sliding up until you get the proper exposure of the animal. And then again, you just take the image. So now if you're like me and you want things very consistent, there's another application that's free that's called Reflex. This one allows you to have all of the same options you would have when using a DSLR within the iPhone. It gives you manual control over your ISO, your shutter speed, your white balance, as well as manual focus. So ISO is what is responsible for how much light into the camera. The shutter speed is basically determining how fast the shutter opens and closes, which is, can be used to stop movement. And let's face it, sometimes these little guys move around a lot, so you're going to want a somewhat decent shutter speed. And then the manual focus is exactly what it sounds like. You're able to change the focus to foreground or background, and there's a really neat tool within the Reflex app that shows you exactly what is in focus. All right, so now we're in the Reflex app. As you can see, we have ISO down at the bottom, shutter speed next, exposure compensation, manual focus, and white balance. So we can tap on that white balance and make sure that it says 5500 Kelvin. As you can see, you can either make it cooler, make it warmer, whatever you want to do, but you want to make sure that it is synchronized with the temperature of the bulb that you're using. So another neat feature is that little eye. So once you hit that eye, you can see exactly what is in focus on your screen so as you can see here so the animal is completely in focus you can also zoom if you like as well so if you have that set up now the animal is looking a little bit dark all right so we're going to hit manual focus we're going to get it a little bit sharper we're also going to raise that iso up a little bit And we can use our headphones as a shutter so we don't move the phone at all. So we just tap it and then takes the photo. It makes it quite simple. And especially when you're dealing with an animal that moves around a little bit more. So we're going to put up our little double hat sunset ultra mill. And I'm just going to grab one of the sharp albino boas 
because they definitely do not sit nearly as still for the camera. And photographing albinos is a little bit more difficult because it's a fine balance of showing off the whites and showing off the oranges and reds. She's moving around a little bit too much, but this is exactly why it's beneficial to have it set up on here. So you can just take photos as needed. Yeah, she's just not gonna cooperate. All right, for the next part, you're gonna open up your photos and there's a couple different ways that you can edit them. And yes, I do say edit. You know, a lot of people will post photos not edited. Doesn't mean anything because oftentimes your camera, both DSLR and your cell phone can oftentimes either overexpose, they get the wrong white balance, or just the saturation is way too deep. The two options I like to use for editing on my phone, one could be Lightroom Mobile, which is a little bit more advanced and honestly pretty annoying to use. And then the second option, which I find is the best option, which is actually just using the native iPhone app. So what you're gonna do is just open up your gallery. You're gonna have those images within the gallery. Just open it up and hit the edit button. And then what I like to do initially is just crop it into whatever works best. And then you can go through, you can change the exposure, you can change whatever brilliance means, highlights, shadows, contrast, brightness, black point, saturation, vibrance, warmth, tint, sharpness, so on and so forth. So now within warmth, you can obviously go way too high or you can go way too low. If you set your white balance correctly, it should be about right. So I know that this snake in particular is a little bit more orange. So I'm gonna bring that up just a hair. Secondly, the background, it's a little off. It's not exactly white. So I would go over to the highlights and then I would try and bring those up a little bit. And then I would also use black point to bring back in some of the contrast. And then at the end of that, what you should have is a properly exposed, decent looking image of your animal. You just hit done. And at that point you are ready to go on and post this animal on your morph market or on social media to show off to all your friends. The sharp albino, same thing. This one, as you could see from the video, didn't really want to cooperate. And quite frankly, most of the time, I use my DSLR anyway for the photos. So same thing, crop in, go over to your adjustments tab. Over here, you can adjust your exposure, obviously for good or for bad. Same situation though. For here, I would actually probably just adjust my shadows because she's actually represented fairly well within the colors of the snake. However, the background itself, which we know is to be white, was a little bit gray. So that way you can at least bump that up and get it to a more normal look. And honestly, I don't really think there's much else to do with that animal. So you can just hit done. And again, same thing, just post that to your morph market, to your Instagram, to whatever you wanna do. Thanks for checking out the video. Leave a comment with any questions you have about photographing your animals, as well as any suggestions for future videos you would like to see coming up. If you wanna stay up to date with what's going on around here, links are in the description. And before you'd go, I'd appreciate it if you left a like, shared this video with a friend that needs to improve their photography abilities, and subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with what's happening around here. Thanks again for watching.